and welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. With us this week, we have Eric. What's up? And we have Tom, who's grooving out to something. What are you listening to, Tom? Uh, it's it's the sound of this this haunted like log cabin that I'm right outside of. So this ghost, apparently the person who lived here and was murdered, uh, unfortunately, was a DJ. So the haunting in this place is actually just like sick beats being dropped randomly in rooms. So I'm just sitting in the truck. Like I've set up sound sensors. I've got mics in the house and I'm just mixing shit together and it's working. Oh, this my is God. going to be the first ever mixtape dropped by somebody who's dead. <laughs> All right. I'm into it. I thought Tupac did that Ooh. already. Oh, dude, that Coachella thing that they did with the hologram. <laughs> yeah. That was fucking cool, dude. I don't care if you're into his music or not. That was cool. I never that actually saw cool. that, but I know of it. That was an impressive ass hologram. Mm -hmm. Impressive oh. ass hologram. <laughs> hey, Smiggle with the subscription. Thank you, Smiggle. Hey, thanks, Smiggle. Comrade Bunny says, woo, yeah, three sexiest men on the internet. <laughs> Where? Lies. Audio listeners, you're missing out. You're going to have to watch these live. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It is nothing but a lie. But anyway, what you fellas been up to? How's your week been? Busy. Uh, back to work. So sadder than the previous week. But <laughs> other than that, pretty, pretty okay. Tom's been busy as normal. Yeah. I, I haven't really played... Like I'm looking at my list, and it's like as long as it usually is, but I don't feel like I've really played that many games. Half of the games on here were like last night and like last weekend. During the week, I hardly played anything except a little bit of Hades. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm getting closer to the end. Um, not really much new, but like every every so often, I'll find something else, like another list to complete. I'm like, hey... Here's this upgrade tree. You've completed like these things. Here's this other thing you can go upgrade now. So now I've got like four or five things I'm simultaneously working on and trying to improve. And there's just, there's so much to that game. There is so much to do. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to finish it. Like, that's a good, like, that's a good problem to have though, right? You never... yeah, yeah, like it doesn't feel grindy. Like I'm, I'm consistently making measurable progress. Like I, it's not bad feeling mm -hmm. it's just like holy shit there's way more to this game than i originally thought mm -hmm. yeah there's a big difference between there being way too many things that you have to do and way too many mm -hmm. things that you can do if you would like yeah yes like items and skills and stuff like that that you may never ever use but they're there if you want that's uh, the fun stuff yeah or like extra <sighs> side missions or something apparently i can't read um so the the main skill tree in hades you can actually there's a toggle to select between two abilities so like one of them says oh hey like you will we're gonna prevent you from dying and you you get like an extra life and then the flip side of that ability is well you can still die but every time your health goes to zero it bumps up by this percentage which you can increase um and I didn't know like those secondary skills existed at all. So I've just been playing with the first set without even looking or upgrading anything else on this list. Oh, um, okay. So... <laughs> Handicapped. Yeah. So, so suddenly uh, apparently... the game has opened up for you. That's yeah. What you're saying. Like, <laughs> I, I have half of the skill tree complete. Uh -huh. um, but apparently, like I thought I, I had completed the whole skill tree. I'm like, wow, that was actually kind of easy. Nah. No, I've literally put in half the work I need. <laughs> that's, well, that's good, though. Yeah. That means there's still yeah. twice as much content. Or oh, yeah. Half again content. And it's like none of these abilities seem overpowered. It's all very much like, okay, you're going to be bad at this type of thing, but good at this type of thing. Like uh, one of the abilities that I love is basically incentivizing you to play like a rogue, where enemies will take extra damage from the back. But if you attack them from the front, they're... Or, yeah, they take extra damage from the back, but if you attack them from the front, they've got armor. Um, so it incentivizes you to to be sneaky. Be a sneaky boy. That's kind of nice. Sneaky boy. Hide in the shadows. Thieves Guild. Oh, uh. the Thieves Guild. 
we know. Yeah, I didn't really play too much. I did different stuff. Like, I actually different didn't stuff? do a whole lot of Rocket League. I didn't do a whole lot of Phasma. I did a little Phasma on Sunday, but that was it. Um, Played a little Shell Shock Live with D-Lies and Scott. And it's been about a year and a half since we played that game. That was a lot of fun. Ooh. I forgot how many unlockables are in that fucking game. Literally hundreds of weapons. So, yeah, it's a good time running through that again, playing more. And then Underlords. Dota 2 Underlords. Oh, Finally I got a... back to that. For... Oh, wow. I haven't heard about That's that one in a while. On the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got in and there's like new uh care or new alliances and stuff. I'm like, oh shit, new stuff to learn. Did they so, radically yeah, did they completely change the game into a different game again? Or is no. it a little bit more familiar? <laughs> there are this time? some there are some radical differences. Uh I have not found I don't think they have aces anymore. Previously, uh there was a tier five unit for almost all alliances that if you got them, it would give some really big buff to that alliance. Mm-hmm. They got mm-hmm. away with that. Huh. Now what they're doing is all units, once you get them to three stars, unlock a d- separate ability. So they have their standard abilities, and then once you max them to a level, they have a new ability they unlock. Hmm. Like for uh, Anti-Mage, for example. He drains people's mana. If you get him three star, if he completely drains their mana and they have none left, the next hit does a huge amount of damage. So they've moved from incentivizing you to just get this the big chonky units and instead want you to focus on upgrading the stuff you have. Yeah, there's always... The game itself didn't show you this way, but playing against people, you were forced to upgrade. Like, you would, yeah. you would get destroyed if you waited for the high-level units. You would have to oh, yeah. strengthen your own things. But no, it's, it's fun to play. It's a nice... Um, I've been running around this week doing a lot of stuff preparing for a trip. So I didn't have a whole lot of time. So I'd like have a half hour a night. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to play around. And that was perfect for that. In and out. And nice. the pace of it's a lot better than when it first started. When it first started, if you won, you was looking for like almost an hour match. Now I uh, was second place and it took like 30 minutes. That's not so bad. Yeah. yeah. That still seems like a, a while, but... There's downtime between two. So like, if you needed to go to the restroom or something between, like, you can. Yeah. It's not a game you have to actively be locked in on, which is nice. I was watching um, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares while I was playing them. <laughs> I love that show. Was it the, the U.S. version or the Yeah, the UK U.S. Ver- version. Oh, okay. I like the U.K. I, version better. Um, It's only season one so far, so it's, I yeah, I'm waiting for the newer ones where it's higher quality stuff. I feel like the U.S. But, version of the show, they really made him play up the whole angry, ranting mm-hmm. uh, chef guy. Whereas the U.K. version, it seems like, like yeah, he's still really stern and blunt with people, but he's it's it's more it's more about helping the restaurant and less about calling people, you know, fucking idiot sandwiches. Idiots. Yeah. <laughs> but either I, way, I good show. Job. But I mean, both of them are yeah. good. Don't get me wrong. I it's enjoy cooking. There's a little too much. I don't want to say too much. There's a little more reality show in it than I'd appreciate. Yeah. Mm. But what... all in all, I like seeing what his views on a mm-hmm. restaurant are, what he thinks should be done, and like recipes and shit. So I enjoy that part. Yeah. But For sure. yeah. So Underlords works perfect if you're watching shows. <laughs> um, and what then else? one thing I do want to touch that this one, just a slight second. I played some Fall Guys. It was Scott Smiggle and I decided, you know what, let's do some Fall Guys. So we load in, see some of the Season 2 content, and some of those levels are cool. And then after a entire or two rounds of it, we kind of just sat there at the screen like, we're kind of bored of this. Oh, Wanna really? Go back to Rocket really? League? <laughs> <laughs> was it just where you, so, weren't, you just weren't in the mood for it, or was the new content really that just unappealing. there's not as much so they added some new rounds but there's still so many other rounds and that sucks like you're still getting so many of the old rounds over and over and over when you're really wanting to just see the new ones so i'm hoping with the next season that they focus on getting more rounds i know that's a lot to ask for but get more rounds that way there's more new content for people to come in and enjoy because this game bounced. 
Like it was almost 200,000 players on Steam. It was down to like 40,000 a day. Like wow. this was lower than Rocket League was before the free to play stuff. Like it really dipped. Jeez. And I mean, I don't know. Sorry, I told you so. I told you so. Anyway, um, <laughs> I mean, but it, any any party everyone, game like that is going to be kind of a fad. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and everyone hit- was hoping season two was going to help revitalize it. New yeah, levels. Yeah. There just wasn't enough. Mm, I, what that they're sucks. doing is good. I'm not saying it's not good. Mm-hmm. It's just so many of those levels been there, done that. I don't need to keep doing it. Mario Party. Think about it. What's the joy of Mario Party? You have all these different games. So much of Fall Guys is still the same, which sucks. But Ooh. that's enough of that. Did Fall Guys, still bored with it, moved on. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. Don't hold back. It's a good now. game. It's a good game. And if I'm in the right mood, I'll probably play it for a good hour. Yeah. Which is fine. That's like sad. there's nothing wrong with a game that you just pick up every once in a while for a short amount of time and then not move every on to game else. needs to be a lifestyle game. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's why I love short story based games. <laughs> um, like we, I, we know life Phasmo and then we kind of ex- exactly just haven't been playing it. I went from putting in 40 hours a week for the first week and then I played zero <laughs> hours this week. <laughs> I, I do want to play a little more of it because I, I, no, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not 100% but. done with it, but I, I did start to get a little burnt out just at the frequency we were playing the game that week. I did start to get Ooh, burnt dude. out towards the end for sure. I Our sessions were off. monstrous. Yeah, yeah, that too. It was one of those situations too where I'd like, I was off work all day, so I wake up and you know, eat some breakfast, whatever. It's noon, little afternoon. By the time people start getting on the Discord, hey, you know, I I work late nights or whatever. You want to play some some Phasmo here in the the early afternoon? Sure, we'll play a little bit. All right, uh, I'm gonna go after a few hours, make some dinner or whatever. Around that time, other people are getting off work and getting home. Hey, you guys want to play some Phasmophobia? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. I'll I'll play some more. Um, <laughs> And then 9 p.m. rolls or yep. midnight rolls around for Adam. What the fuck have I done today? <laughs> I've done nothing today but hunt ghosts. <laughs> Actually, not I mean, even hunt Tom ghosts, Tom. just identifying ghosts. Yeah, true. But yeah, um, you play anything? Actually, Adam, you have something on there I want to know about because it's a movie that I look back on now more fondly than I did at the time. Yeah. Blair Witch. Yeah, so I, I was on my, you know, my October spooky conquest uh, looking at games, and Blair Witch is on Game Pass, and I already have Game Pass, so perfect. Let's check it out. I heard mixed reviews. I heard mixed things about the game, and I played it, and I actually almost beat it, and I have some very mixed <laughs> feelings <laughs> about the game. Um, I uh, When I say I almost beat it, I could have beat it. I literally stopped playing. Because I was mad, <laughs> because I was just ready for it to be over and it wouldn't end. Um, I'll get I'll get into that a little bit later. What did you keep running west and you just couldn't get out of the woods? <laughs> well, I mean, no, but um, I'll, I'll get into that later. First, I want to talk about some of the things I did like about the game, and maybe first I should just describe the game a little bit. It's a first-person survivor horror game. Uh, basically, you're this. Um, I don't know if you're like an ex cop, ex sheriff, or if you're currently a sheriff with like some kind of mental issue, like PTSD and some other stuff. But you're going off into this forest to find this missing boy, and there's a you know like a search party there that you're gonna try to meet up with, and you have your trusty companion. You have a dog. It's fantastic. You've got a little dog oh, helper. No. Um. No, Eric. What you're thinking, no. It alludes to it later, but no. Okay. <laughs> Any game with a dog, I'm immediately just like, if they kill this dog, I swear to God, I'm going to throw my monitor outside. Yeah. <laughs> but no, the dog is cool. Um, basically, the gameplay loop is you wander around into the woods, um, find some clues on where the the boy is or where to go next you use the dog a lot which is cool he'll like scout out items and stuff and sniff around and if you find something you can have the dog sniff it and he'll take you and follow the scent um stuff like that there are some combat encounters where the dog will kind of act as your eyes 
So Ooh. the the enemies are like these weird tree people things and it'll get really dark and they'll be like just scurrying about around you and you have to use your flashlight to keep them away from you and the dog will bark in the general direction of one of these things that's closest and then you have to point your flashlight at it and it kind of like freaks out and then jumps around somewhere else um huh. but but basically the, those are only you know few and far between or whatever but most of the time you're you're walking around the forest and trying to solve these puzzles and progress through the story. Um, one of the things I really liked about the game, sort of, is you have the video camera. Um, kind of like Outlast, you use it in certain parts of the game to to see um, when the visibility is low. But you also use it when you find these tapes laying around. And these tapes show footage of, usually in the area that you are, uh, footage from something that happened in the past, some, um, there was like one that was actually like some dude taking that kid away that you're looking for and some other random stuff. But there are puzzles where you have to use the tapes because if you're, you watch the video and then you have to pause it at a certain time and it'll actually change something in the environment with the video. So like the video might be a uh, dude showing you how this machine works or whatever. And then he like, he walks into this log cabin and, and opens the door and then shuts it behind him. You go to go into the cabin. The door is locked. You watch the tape. You pause it when he opens the door. And all of a sudden, the door is unlocked in the real world and you can actually get in there. So stuff like that was kind of cool. Like they could have hmm. done some really interesting stuff with that. But every time that that mechanic was in the game, it was something just brain dead simple. And it was just like, oh, watch the tape. Oh, that's the thing. Yep. Yep, walk up to it, pause the tape here, and that puzzle's done. It was just, it, it just left, it left something to be desired. They could have done some really interesting stuff with that, I thought. That sounds like it could have been such a cool mechanic. Yeah, yeah it really was. could have been. And that's kind of how all the all the puzzles were fairly easy. Um, most of them were pretty straightforward. They were enough to be engaging, but not not enough to where I would consider it like a puzzle game or to really, you know, test your test your smarts um yeah but the game is developed by bloober team they did layers of fear and observer and i think layers of fear did layers of fear 2 ever come out i don't, I don't think i think they remember. did a sequel but um it's developed by them and you can definitely tell it's developed by them because they they excel in certain things and i feel like they they have like this the same sort of um what is it like haunted house roller coaster psychological horror mind bending WTF, WTF sections, right? Yeah. So they have these fantastic set pieces. The graphics are they're awesome, the sound design is amazing. Um but the gameplay is kind of weird in spots. So I get to the end of this game. The game is probably five or six hours, I'm guessing. And I go into this house. This is the final thing. The, the, the little boy that you're trying to rescue is supposedly in the basement of this house. And you're, and you're making your way through it. And it gets to the, your typical Bloober Team game uh, sequence where you're on this roller coaster of your dude's freaking out. You, know, you go into this room. There's nothing in the room. You turn around. The door is locked. You turn around. The room is different. Something changed. And you know, jump scare here. Psychological crazy moment here. Um, and they did some cool stuff in that in that area, and I like that kind of thing. And then it kept going. And then it kept going. And then it kept going. I actually... It's welcome. Dude, I actually got so mad. I'm at the end of the game, towards the conclusion of the whole game, and I just didn't care. I just shut it off because I was so sick of this stupid section. <laughs> I'm not joking. I checked the footage before we started this cast because I was curious how long that actually was. It was 40 minutes in the same Jesus. house walking through narrow corridors with like the sh house shape shifting and like these different stealth segments and, and things constantly happening. And it was just exhausting. <laughs> like the, those, those segments can be so unnerving and interesting, like from a, like a art symbolism, just set piece perspective. But when it goes on for 40 straight minutes and doesn't stop, I'm just yeah over it at that point. Like it was absolutely egregious. 
Um, so overall, uh, I mean, overall, if you're if you're looking for a horror game to play, and you've already played some of like the really amazing, well-renowned games, and you have Game Pass, it's not a waste of time necessarily. Like there were some really really cool moments in that game, especially with um, just like visually and audio or auditorily and visually just absolutely stunning at certain points and i was really impressed with the entire game basically takes place in a forest but the environment changed enough in different ways to keep it fresh the entire game so like Hmm. certain areas were like way darker they were like bright segments there were sections where Almost like they had a green color filter over everything. Like they actually did a good job oh. with the environment design to where, yes, it's in a forest the entire time, but there are these sections that are identifiable from each other. But yeah, overall, right. it was fine. It was interesting. Besides rage quitting the end, um, for the most part, I I enjoyed it. I don't know, six out of ten. So, mm, that's that's sad. I feel that that had the potential. Like Blair Witch, in hindsight, was ahead of its time and was actually pretty fucking creepy. Mm-hmm. In the um, same vein of something like a Cloverfield or something like that. Yeah. Where it hits just enough on reality in the hidden cam footage whole idea. Mm-hmm. They well, could have done something well, really well, the, good with that. The, mar- game. the marketing of that movie at its time, too, was really, really exceptional because it was unprecedented. It was late 90s, right? Like yep. before, you know, viral internet content was really a thing. And like, you know, th- the things that you saw in the media, you pretty much believed, right? That was your source Yo, of I, information. I heard that, <laughs> I heard that the uh, black and white footage is actual real footage they found in the woods. Exactly. Yeah. There yeah. was a lot of that going on. And there were actually, there was actually a couple of like documentary style things they made in marketing the movie that they showed on like, like history channel or some shit and like they, they nailed it they really yeah they really made it feel like i know a lot of people actually went into the theater thinking that that was a true story and like actual footage and stuff so they did a really good job with the marketing of that and i, I still hold it was before it's time that is the first time i it, correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure like that is the first big lost footage movies as far as i know yeah for sure and I mean, that was just, I can't remember. I, I want to rewatch it because I've come to like that style of movie now mm-hmm. when at that point I did not. Like, I remember thinking like, oh, that makes me nauseous. I hate not being able to, I want to see what's going on. And now it's, that's part of the suspense. That's part of the feel. It, yeah. And it helps it feel more real, especially in that movie yeah. specifically, because all the supernatural stuff is more implied than shown. Yeah. That's that's really the big thing to me of, you know, what Blair Witch contributed to the horror genre in general. Um, they didn't show anything. You literally never awesome. even see the witch like yeah. at all. Not even at the end. So like, OK, personal anecdote. My father doesn't really do scary movies he just doesn't really get scared by them they're just kind of boring to him he's one of those guys that just yells don't go in the murder house oh look you got murdered what did you think would happen <laughs> play stupid games win stupid prizes like stuff like yeah. that Shock at your face um but blair witch scared the ever loving fuck out of him because it was in his head yeah. because your head <laughs> will create something far far scarier than anything you can show mm-hmm. on film Yep. Right. Absolutely. You got to show just enough. Horror. You show just enough that people scare themselves. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, um, it's a shame. I was really hoping you were going to tell me how awesome this game was and you might encourage me to play it. The, the problem is <laughs> there are some really, really awesome segments in the game, but the entire game as a whole is not that awesome. It's fine. Like I said, I actually stuck through most of the game, um, but yeah. Boo. Okay. I mean, you could still play it if you have Game Pass. You could just try it. I, out. I don't have yeah. Game Pass. It's beautiful, uh, like visually. 
they did a really good job with the graphics and stuff. To me, I would have to go out of my way to do it. And it sounds like this is not a game worth going out of your way to experience. No, no, I wouldn't think so. I mean, some of the reviews were really good. I guess if you really get into the story, I wasn't very invested in the story when I was playing. I just didn't care that much. I just wanted to see what they did with it and kind of experience it. Yeah. Um, but if you really care about the story, I mean, I, I guess it's okay. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, who else has something? I played and didn't play Tarkov this week. Oh, you want to explain? <laughs> I've uh, I've been doing this thing where I'm making a bunch of money and never actually playing any raids. So I, I've gotten my economy up there. I, I hit the 20 million ruble mark. And it's all nice. from just passive income, Bitcoin farm collecting, uh, making moonshine in the hideout and stuff. Like I've I've literally just been logging in like two to three times a day and just like managing my hideout and selling Bitcoin and not actually playing the game. <laughs> but that makes the game so much better when you do go to play. I was going to say, yeah. And, and my plans are now that I've gotten what, what I consider a lot of money. I know the people that like, this is the only game they play. Like most of them are probably sitting about 20 to 30 million. Um, but I'm not that. So like this is Rob. a lot for me. Our boy Red Rebel Rob fucking got the cap or or container. Yeah, he did. Crazy. Insane. So uh, yeah, next time I actually play play, I'll be more inclined to bring in really nice stuff and have fun with it, and not have to worry about finances or anything. So that's cool. Build some badass guns. Yeah, and it's, and it's nice knowing that even even if things go very poorly and my economy tanks, I still have the hideout. And I can just stop playing for a couple of weeks and, and get some cash built back up. All you need to do is get some fuel. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about the giveaway that I missed because when I signed on on Friday, it was already Saturday in Russia. Oh, <laughs> see, I told you to do that earlier and you're like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, yeah, they gave out another free gift package for people. Um, I can't remember why, honestly. I just remember. It was a birthday. Like, it was a uh, the birthday of the studio. Oh, okay. So yeah, they gave everybody some free gifts, and it was actually a decent amount of stuff. I, I would say the value of all the items that they give you is probably in the three to four million range. Hmm. No, wait, hang on, I'm exaggerating. Rob Let's was see. saying somewhere in like two point something, yeah, probably. Yeah, two point something. But still, million. that's that's a lot of money for them just to give them, yeah, give away for sure. And it was like but some actually all, useful equipment too. It's not just a bunch of stuff. Like you can actually use that. They had stuff a fucking P90 in or there. Or you could sell it. They? Yeah, P90, a bunch of ammo and mags, um, an Ooh. RPK gun, ammo and mags, uh, 100 GP coins, which are about 30k rubles a piece, and a grenade case and a dog tag case and some other stuff. So you want to explain the grenade case? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so I'm, I'm putting these items in my stash. I'm like, oh, cool, a grenade case. I actually kind of wanted one, but they're a little more expensive than I was willing to pay, and I usually don't have that many grenades anyway. Um, so I was like, ah, oh, cool, grenade case. I'll just start putting my grenades in there. So I go to transfer my grenades into it, and I open it, and it's full of grenades. They gave you a grenade case <laughs> completely full of grenades. I was like, oh, fantastic. There's going to be grenade spam everywhere for the next couple days, I'm sure. Yeah, as much as I wanted to play today, my first thought was I'm going to get blown up if I play today. <laughs> yep. I mean, people are pretty nade happy anyway in the game, so it probably didn't change that much. Ah, true. But people like me who never run grenades all of a sudden have grenades. Yeah, you should run grenades. They're so useful. They're really, really useful. I need to start doing especially like you were explaining it as a repositioning tool. Exactly, yeah. That's how you flush people out of their little hidey holes. Mm. Force them to move and shoot them when they move. Come on, Eric. You played Halo. You know how this works. No, 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 no. I was the one everyone hated because I fucking cornered where, yeah, I'm retreating because you're kicking my ass. But as soon as you turn that corner, you're dead because I've already planted one and have it on your head. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was that I was that guy. Oh, speaking of which, they added. Uh, I saw they added ODST to the Game Pass. Yeah. Oh, it's a game pass. Yeah. 
Uh, they also added it to uh, Master Chief Collection a little bit ago. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's if you haven't played it, that's a fun campaign. That is a super unique campaign to play through. I actually, had, I had unique. thought of, when I was looking at games, I thought about it before I decided on Blair Witch. So I might end up playing. Even it if you don't point. beat it, it's fun to load into just to see what it is. Ooh, it's okay. not what you would expect. I'm down. And it has a feel unlike any other Halo game. Oh. But yeah, I say that. As I, I like Halo casually, sort of, sometimes. So if it's a way different, that might be really intriguing, actually. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's different. It's the, the gameplay, I mean, you're still going to, it's Halo. It's literally Halo 3. Mm-hmm. But you, if you boot it up and you play, say, an hour of it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Hmm. You'll be like, oh, this is kind of cool. I'll have to download it but, and install it and, and do the things. Yeah. Anyway, Tom. Yeah. You were doing stuff. What have you been doing? Yeah, I guess. Um, uh, I played a little bit of Pavlov today. And uh, what's what's kind of nice, and I'm, I'm going to gonna expound one of the niceties of server browser over matchmaking, um, there's a, a consistent server that I play on uh, for Pavlov. And when I jumped in the server, there's a bunch of people who I regularly play with. And they're like, oh, shit, Tom's back. We haven't seen you in weeks, man. What's up? And I'm like, I've been grinding that Beat Saber. And they're like, yep, that would do it. Um, <laughs> but it's, not, it's like there's a consistent group of people that I play with. We all regularly know each other. Like, we know this one dude is going to sneak around and stab people because he's a bastard. But we love him when he's on our team. Uh, and we know this other guy is just going to run everywhere with a shotgun because that's what he does. Uh, and it's just nice to have, like, a tiny little game-specific community. It feels like fucking 1998 all over again. <laughs> it's like the old FAP. Classic. It's like the old FAP servers on TF2. Yeah, exactly. Like, you jump in, you know who's going to be there. Like, I, I saw some 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 of those people, like, added me to the, their Steam friends list. And I'm like, oh, hey, they all loaded up Pavlov at the same time. I, I guess I can I can jump in and see what they're up to. It's like, oh shit, the Handy Clapper just clapped me again. That's his name, <laughs> is Handy Clapper, which is fucking great. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was it was fun. Uh, I played a little bit of Poker Stars. Uh, it turns out that you get, uh, like, the slots aren't just in the lobby. You can actually bring, like, a tiny slot machine into the poker table that's visible to just you. And while you're waiting for the hands to go through, you can just play slots. Or set it to auto mode and like throw it up in the corner so you watch your money trickle away slowly while you're playing poker and losing more money. Literally an auto mode on a virtual arcade without real money on a slot screams addiction. Screams fucking addiction. It's a Skinner box. The game is literally there. And a lot of games are literally there so you can watch virtual meaningless numbers go up. And it makes you feel good. Because but there's you, a difference between virtual meaningless dollars go up because you want it poker versus <laughs> I literally flipped a switch and RNG is telling me if I win or lost. You click max, and it's not even doesn't even you get you fifty auto and you click pull and that's it. <laughs> yeah, but you don't even get the dopamine hit of actually pulling the lever, like not physically, but I mean in game pulling it yeah. every time. It's just over yeah, there doing it on itself. But, you get no hit. Yeah, so I could sit there and like. It's basically you know, you're watching what- and chat with people, and then every time it goes doo doo doo, I'm like, oh, cool guys, I want something. They're like, yeah, man, that's great. You're basically watching the the DVD menu screensaver until the little orb that's bouncing off all the sides of the screen like lands perfectly yeah. in the corner. Exactly. But it's not even, goes, I'm not even hey, watching. Hey, nice. It. You're not even watching it though. Also, I love that reference, Adam. I fucking love <laughs> it because all of us have been there. <laughs> yep. Well, not anymore. These young kids don't know what that's about. Say. But um, yeah, I mean, you're not even watching the slots. What gets me? If you're watching it constantly, I could kind of get it. Maybe. I usually like put it right out of my field of vision, so I can still like see people and talk to people and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it, it it stays there. Stays but it's right cool to see that they added something to it. Yeah. Um. I uh. I really like Poker Stars VR. It's 
it is a free game if you didn't know they make all their money through uh, a cosmetic shop so if you want like the the super cool vape pen that you can bring to the table or like little interactables um and you don't want to have to grind for the in-game currency you can buy it but that's the only monetization that i see and they're still adding stuff to the game which is really fucking cool like poker stars vr and rec room are kind of in the same category of why the fuck is this free you could be charging for this and also to the point of how are you making money or that many people buying cosmetics because right. you have server upkeep yeah also it's but literally it's a gambling game and they haven't yeah. destroyed it with microtransactions so <laughs> no. actually so um that might be why the game's not destroyed with microtransactions because because it's you're already gambling, gambling. Yeah. Offering, yeah there are interesting laws that come into play on what you can do with monetization when it comes to gambling that might be experienced by children so you can't really make poker stars use real money at least not easily that's good hmm. yeah yeah uh you got anything else you're wanting to get to uh i played a little bit of baba is you um and hey. I, I know I've talked uh, about before. that's a throwback it's a fantastic fucking game and what i love the most about it is Literally, by by viewing a single screen of the of the game, you know exactly what you're getting in. Because be, the the gameplay rules are literally written out. Okay, Baba is you. Trophy is win. Wall is stop. Boulder is push. All right. So I know the rules. How do I alter these rules to get what I want? Mm -hmm. um, Baba it's, is it's win. Great. Yeah, <laughs> Baba is win. But then Bob is not you, so you can't do that. Because I tried that. Um, there was <laughs> yeah, because you have to win. Baba doesn't have to win. You have to win. Yeah, exactly. So there was a point when I became a boulder and I turned the wall and from stop to win, and I just ran my boulder into a wall. Boulder <laughs> is me. Wall is win. I won. So but it's it's I love that game like for, the, for what it is. Yeah, it's it's clever. It's a nice little puzzle game, and and by far one of the most unique puzzle games I've played in a very long time. Yeah, it went a complete opposite way of something like The Witness, which is beautiful and engaging Ooh. and engrossing. And then this is just like, man, this is really dirty to look at, but we're fucking clever. It's yeah. got charm though, kind of too. Oh yeah, I mean it. It looks like it was drawn in MS Paint. I fucking love the art style so much. <laughs> I mean, in reality, it might have been. Yeah. If the dude doesn't know what he's doing with graphics, it might have been MS Paint sprites. Uh, maybe, yeah. Could be. Which is awesome. Uh, Irk, you and I played uh, played some hoops. Yeah. I've, Last I've night. Learned that I don't have the ups. I've got no ups. Nope, but it was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed and it. Then, and then what? Ty came in and we started doing some hockey. Yeah. I, I love the extra modes in Rocket League because I feel like I can play with like my my GC friends, even though I'm a plat two because nobody actually gives a shit. And it's nice. Yeah. That's always really nice. So like you just have to make sure that they don't give a shit before you do it. Cause some people are going for some of the weird GC titles. Yeah. But I mean, once they hit it, they don't give a shit. Um, I bought a new game last weekend. Um oh. It is a first-person shooter roguelike. Yeah, okay. another one of these. Um, rhythm game. Odd, oh, wait. Odd um, um, oh, what's the name of that game? I think I know what you're talking about. I can't think of the name of it. Oh, I was waiting. Uh, BPM. That's, that's it. Minute. That's the one. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Because that's a so I don't, awesome I don't know a lot repurpose. about it, but I do remember seeing like a trailer or something. So that's a cool repurpose on an acronym. It is, yeah, it's a, yeah. it's perfect. What is it? Explain. So I like it. Um, the it's cool. It's got a really cool art style. That's I can't call it grayscale, but it's color scale. Like it is, it is a monochrome color scheme depending on what levels you're at. Um, um and the game has this kind of retro vibe to it. Um, it plays pretty well. Um, I have some small issues with the, 
uh, just the progression it almost it feels like a sh- like a crapshoot like a lot of roguelikes run into this issue where okay you get these upgrades early or you get these weapons early you know you're having a good run if you don't it's just kind of a slog and you just wait for the next one um i hit a lot of moments in bpm like that uh, i've also learned that i have no rhythm whatsoever i might be a <laughs> god of beat saber but that's it <laughs> When it comes to shooting things, like, because you can shoot, you can dodge, and you can even shoot on the half beat if you have an appropriate weapon. Um, So you can get really clever. Everything from jumping to dodging to reloading to shooting is all based on the beat of the music in the level. And you've got, like, this beat timer that's constantly flashing to get you in the mood. There are several times in playing the game when I had to actually just stop. Like, I'm off of beat, I'm freaking out, I'm surrounded by enemies, I'm clicking as fast as I can, nothing's working. And I just have to stop, start bobbing my head a little bit, get into it. Okay, shoot, shoot, (laughs) dodge, dodge, reload, reload, shoot, 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 reload, reload, dodge, dodge, shoot. Um, And you kind of get into, like, this weird like mental pattern this weird vibe of, of of violence and viscera and reloading and dodging out of the way and it's it's a, a lot of fun um i don't know if i could recommend it at full price right now um and i need to look it up i might have been 30 bucks i don't know if it's really good enough to to pay that price for it but on sale yeah and especially if you really like rhythm games and you like roguelites uh, a roguelikes. It's fun. Is it a 1.0 release or is it early access? Um, I thought it was 1.0. All right. I was need it, to look at or, it. Was it in early access or did a roguelike game actually come out immediately? Uh, I'm clicking. That's clicking. never the case. <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> did they That's actually finish the a game and then just release it? I think that's part of a prerequisite of being a roguelike roguelite anymore is you have to be early access. Yes. 100%. In fact, okay. Rogue invented early access, if I remember right. Uh, it's 20 bucks, which, uh, like, 15 okay, that's um, 10 definitely. Uh, it doesn't look like this is early access. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of levels. I think it's got seven. Um, but I haven't gotten past level four yet. Uh, cause it's, it's kind of a difficult game. Um, and if, if you are musically inclined, this is going to be easier for you. Just straight up. If you can keep straight a beat, you, you are already better at this game than I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So rhythm shooter. I'm going to actually have to check that out. That does sound interesting to me. It does, yeah. It's, it's an interesting cool. interesting combination of genres for sure. I might stream it to uh, to Discord after the show so you guys can check it out. It is fun. It's very well made. Like I I have some small issues with it because it's not it's not perfect, but I think it's good for what it is. Yeah, I'll I'll give it a look. Um, anything else you got there, Tom? Ah. <sighs> Oh, uh, I played a little bit more Duskers. Um, I haven't seen anything really scary on that game, even though it's got like horror influences. Oh yeah, but it does scratch that itch of like I don't want to get into like Factorio levels of automation, mm-hmm. but I want to do something that doesn't really feel like work, but still involves me giving commands on a command line, and <laughs> d- it's, it's a weird feeling. Um, but Duskers does scratch that itch, and I'm still liking it. What was there <laughs> anything? Um... Like, is the music or sound at all unnerving or creepy or atmospheric, or is it really? So, uh, atmospheric, yes, definitely. Like, running around a spaceship that's uh, a derelict spaceship sounds really cool. It sounds, like, empty, and there's stuff going off, and sometimes you'll hear a siren, and other times you'll just, you know, hear, like, the war of fans or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, It does put you in the mood of exploring, like, a desolate space, um, but it's not really scary. It doesn't invoke any mood other than just loneliness and emptiness. Okay. Have you gotten yeah, into was... any of the actual enemy encounters yet? Um, I have been avoiding it. And that's, that's the thing about Duskers is that 
I'm playing this pretty conservatively because I already lost one drone to mm -hmm. a, a freak accident. Um, it's you're not really incentivized into combat, at least not right now, not with my current set of drones. So, mm -hmm. like, if I see red in a room or yellow, like, I'm just going to avoid it. There's nothing that says I have to go in there, right? There's yeah. nothing that's pushing me to do, you know, something that is clearly bad for my health, so I just don't. I, the upside is that, like, I feel like I'm in control of my destiny with Duskers. The downside is that that's kind of boring, because if I'm always playing it safe, if I'm not taking chances because the rewards just aren't that great, then, mm -hmm. yeah, the game becomes kind of rote. Like, go here, do this thing. Don't get caught by these guys. Oh, this thing looks risky, so we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You know, settle down, get a 9 to 5 job. I mean, that's Marry kind of... A to high school with, have a couple of kids. <laughs> put it... into your 401k. Like, it's really dull. Yeah. Yeah, any game that relies on, well, any horror game, and then like any game that's trying to get give you a lot of tension, it's okay. I have to do this thing, but I really don't want to do this thing. But I have to do this thing, and there's this yeah. thing in the way, and I can't just go do the thing because there's a th there's another thing, and then the thing might do the thing, and then and then I'll die, and then it'll be super scary. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it, and it sounds like. Where... It sounds like, hey, there's this optional thing you could do, and it'll be super tense, and you're just like, no, I'm okay. See ya. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wish, and, and there there might be more coming, um, but I've played a, a couple hours of this, and I haven't encountered like anything that says, hey, do the thing you don't want to do when it's scary and risky. And if I've gone a couple hours like that already, I'm either playing way, way, way too safe, or... The game hasn't made it appropriately clear what I'm supposed to be doing. So mm -hmm. I'm really just gathering resources to survive longer. That's it. Or yeah. there just is no reason to risk it for the biscuit. Yeah. I would imagine maybe later on something. I don't know. I would hope. I think Alien Isolation took a long time to get started. I can't remember if it was like two hours, but I mean, it took a while to get to get going. I think it was about an hour. Yeah. I think. Which at the time I was like, come on, where's the alien? Where's the alien? Yeah. I want to see him. Because you knew so much about the game already that you yeah. were anticipating. Yeah. It delivered. Which that, is part of, that is part of the beauty of coming into a game completely blind. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, is that you I, just I, enjoy it moment to moment rather than when's this happening? When's this yeah. happening? Yeah, exactly. You have no expectation. Uh, all right, Tom. I think it's just you from here on out. So what's next? Uh, that's all I had. That's it. Oh. Yeah. Well I'm done. done. <laughs> Sweet. I mean, not that I don't want you to talk, but I, I don't it. want you to talk. So <laughs> shut let's, Tom. Um, moving on. Moving on to the news <laughs> front. And um, this is one I thought was kind of fun. Uh, Mario Kart live circuit or home circuit or the fucking remote controlled car Mario Kart is out. Um, it's getting... Eh, average reviews like seven six some eight like it's okay uh the issue they're getting with is you have to be within 16 feet of the car with your switch oh because it connects to your switch and doesn't actually connect to your home network yeah so that's why I mean, I find that, your that, network so i mean it's it's not ideal but yeah if you're sitting on your couch and your tracks around your couch it's not an issue but uh, cool. good notes are they've noted that the cars work great on hardwood, on carpet. The only thing you need to worry about is the threshold. If you're going against the threshold, try to approach it um, on where you have plenty of speed to get over it because these are real wheel, rear wheel drive. So you can get hung up on them a little bit. Mm. Some people are saying if they had a threshold that was too much and they were getting hung, they would just take a little piece of cardboard and it was all good. Okay. Mm. So, yeah, um, I'm intrigued by this. I will likely get this at some point. I want to see what this is. Could be fun. Definitely yeah. an interesting concept. Oh, super interesting concept. Um, next bit of news. Um, it's that Homescapes and Gardenscapes, they have a ad type that they got caught out specifically. But there are other mobile games that do this kind of ad where it's like, hey, save this person. 
by pulling this lever to drop lava, this level to drop gold, and do it smart. And then you click the ad to go to the game, and then you find out the game's nothing like that. It's just a complete bait and switch. Well, those have officially been banned. And um, what countries were that? Uh, uh, so it's actually an advertising agency that's banning them. Oh, it's the uh, advertising agency banning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so this this isn't like a government action or anything else like that. It's literally an ad agency saying, "Hey, uh, if you want to use you know our platforms or anything that uses our standards, you gotta stop doing this. You have to stop being shitty." And it's weird. Uh, Gardenscapes and Homescapes are the ones that got called out. Their play type isn't something they need to hide. Their play type is something people actively seek out. So the yeah. fact that they're obfuscating what their game is in an ad feels so fucking bizarre to me. It's like, they're one of the match three type games that people like to play. Like just do a search on any app store for like Grand Theft Auto five or Grand Theft Auto, right? You're going to get like four or five different games where the pictures and videos are of like Grand Theft Autos four and five and you get the mobile game and it's, it's nothing. Right. Um, like this shit is super common, but like when when you have a game with actual content, why do you need to be idiots about it? Why do you need to, to hide behind misleading advertisements? What good is that doing you? Exactly. And I'm not gonna lie, I've absolutely clicked on one of those before because some of those are puzzly, and I'm like, I like puzzle games. I'm like, yeah. give me a puzzle game like this on my phone. As you would yeah. say, Tom, it's a good chitter game. Hell yeah. It is. It's great. Like those games, if they were real, like the people put in so much goddamn time into those ads, making them like look and play like real gameplay. Just make the fucking game already. It's like you've done like in the eight step process, you've done one through seven of like designing gameplay systems, art assets, animations, everything. You just need to get over that hump and make it an actual app. So but no, it's, they, they make it a fucking animated GIF and they're like, ah, oh, we'll sell a bunch of games this way. <laughs> But now they cross out. Less... Fun fact: Homescapes and Gardenscapes do now include levels like that after so many levels now. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Why? Just like that doesn't fit because then it's, then it's not false advertising to put those commercials. It on. doesn't fit their core game. That's not what they are. Uh, They're a match three game, which is fine. <laughs> That's a good type of game, but own what you are. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, but anyway, um, they're trying to put a stop to it, which is good. It needs to stop. Misleading ads are the fucking worst. Yep. Yep. Um, this next one, I'm not even going to say any words. Tom, take it off about the All Oculus right. Quest. So uh, we reported a while ago that the Oculus Quest would mandate you cannot use this VR headset without attaching it to a Facebook account. And it can't be a Facebook account you make specifically for the Quest. It has to be like your real account, real names, following all Facebook's policies, you know, sometimes even needing to tie it to a government ID, a phone number, all that stuff. Um, so somebody bought a Quest, linked it to their Facebook account, and their Facebook account got shut down and banned within 10 minutes. Facebook says, oops, sorry, it's a mistake. Uh, but apparently it's a wide enough issue that the, like, all the tech blogs are talking about this. Like, yeah, no, it's not, it's not one person that got their shit banned. Mm -hmm. It's an ungodly amount of people who are getting their shit banned. And by the way, when you attach a Facebook account, uh, or if you don't have a Facebook account attached to the uh, Oculus Quest, it's a brick. It literally becomes worthless. You can't do anything with it. So when your one account gets banned, you're like, fine, I'll just make another Facebook account. No, nah, they detect that and ban that one instantly too. So you just, like, a bunch of people have bought these, like, $300 to $500 fucking paperweights because of the online services attached to them. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it's, messy. It'd be, it'd be one thing to say, hey, you have to make a Facebook account. But to, you know, try to, to really crack down on spoof accounts to the point where, you know, th profiles without pictures or phone numbers attached to them and stuff are getting flagged and stuff. Well, it, it there, gets weird. So I'm not about to endorse people's behaviors that might hit this, but this is also a scenario. Someone has a Facebook account. 
they start posting a lot of political stuff that starts getting really risque this way or that way. And they get sent to what people are jokingly call Facebook jail. When they're in Facebook jail, their account's banned. That could be for a long-term process. They can't play their Oculus if their account gets banned. Mm -hmm. So because of something they do over here, they now have a VR headset they can no longer use. Yeah. Which I hard. don't like that tetherment. No, no. Let's, let's put this in perspective. Let's take a look at the competition. What happens if you say some racist ass shit on Steam community boards? You know what they do? They ban you from the community boards. That's it. You can't use the boards anymore. You can't use the forums anymore, right? Like if you cheat in too many games, you can't participate in Valve anti-cheat enabled servers. You can still play TF2 on random servers, just not ones with Valve anti-cheat. That's the way to fucking do this. If you violate, you know, terms of, of a website or a product, ban the thing that's the that has the violation in it, right? Like, mm -hmm. your Oculus stuff has almost no connection to your Facebook stuff, except that they're owned by the same company. So... Okay, do like chargebacks against the, the Oculus store and do like a bunch of shit uh, like over there. Sure, ban that, but don't ban the Facebook account because of that. And if you do some stuff to get banned from Facebook, why are you impacting the video games? It doesn't make any goddamn sense, and Steam has been doing this right forever. It would be like, here's another example. If you do some shady shit on Twitch and your Twitch account gets banned, it'd be like them then going somehow and saying, well, your Amazon account's now deactivated too. Yeah, like, yeah. fuck. Shit. that is so fucking stupid so my my official recommendation uh is to not buy an oculus anything right now uh the hp reverb 2 is out um or it, it will be out soon and it's great it's a fantastic headset if you want to spend you know to get the cadillac of vr you can buy the index um unfortunately if you're looking for this standalone works without a pc headset oculus is your only your only game right now well, and, isn't, uh, isn't the Reverb, parts. the Reverb 2 is also significantly more expensive than the Quest 2, isn't it? Um, isn't it in like the six, 600 range? Yeah, I think so. And so let's, that's let's literally speak, twice as expensive. Let's speak honest about just the hardware, though. The Quest 2 is a good device. It is. Yeah. It's a great device. It is I mean, a fantastic I, device. I don't have a VR rig. If I were to get a VR rig, knowing me and how often I would probably play VR games, you know, the Quest 2 is the perfect price point and from you know what it seems like the perfect device for my use case. But this makes it kind of weird and a lot of people are going to be detracted from from buying it because of that. Yeah. And yeah. there there really aren't that many VR headsets in that price range with that feature set to compete. So I'm I'm about to say some fucking one percenter bullshit. So I oh God. I apologize oh no. in advance. Um, you know, occasionally, at least before this year and the everything, um, I would occasionally go over to people's houses. I would also occasionally bring my VR stuff so we could all play Beat Saber and Blade and Sorcery and like just chill out and play random games. Um, that involved me packing up tripods, lighthouses, the headset trollers the pc all the pc cabling mouse keyboard like it's a pain in the fucking ass um so i was actually looking at getting rid of that problem for 300 bucks right like okay the quest 2 is gonna drop i'm gonna pick one of these up and that will become my um my lan vr setup right where i can just take that to people's houses and like we can jam out on beat saber for a couple hours without worrying about anything else mm -hmm. um but I can't now. Like, how I don't have a Facebook account. And if I make one, apparently it can't just be a purpose driven, this is for my VR system account. So, what am I going to do? And what I'm going to do is just, you know, keep shoving fucking tripods in a duffel bag and taking my index places because I can't buy a Quest 2. I would like to know the, the actual specific details of what all needs to be on the account to not get flagged because I, I, I there's got to be a lot of people that made a Facebook account just for the Oculus and it's going fine. Well, and this person had already had a, the, the big one that's being highlighted on Reddit, this person already had an Oculus account too. So it's not like this was a brand new everything. He had an Oculus account with games purchased on previous generations of Oculus and he linked it to his Facebook that he had just made. So an established account linked to a new account and he still got flagged. 
Yeah. Where that should give you some level of assurance that it's not a bot because you're bringing in a, an established account, which is also under your roof. Like, let's be clear. Oculus accounts are under the Facebook roof. Yeah. I so, guess the only, the only reason that could have got flagged is maybe they assumed that Oculus account got hacked. New Facebook account was created to attempt to lock it out of the old account or something. Uh, yeah, like there's there's a lot of ways that shit like that goes sideways. Um, but like in in Facebook's defense, when it comes to like, well, what do I have to do to not be considered fraudulent? They are not going to tell you that and they shouldn't. Um, when you are defending against spam yeah, and scammers yeah. and just the awful people of the internet, if you say, hey, this is the way to not get marked as a bad person, you know what the spammers are going to do? <laughs> the stuff to not get marked as a bad person. So you can't exactly tell them. It's yeah. like it's like uh, banning cheaters in games, right? You don't want to ban them instantly because you want to try to cast as wide of, uh, of a net as possible. Mm -hmm. So you do these big ass, you know, 10,000 user ban waves. And then and like four or five different hacks are, are eliminated instead of somebody going, oh, they detected it because I used this one thing like this. Well, now we can make it better. It becomes less of an iterative process and more of a detective process. Mm -hmm. Just the same with like uh, YouTube, like their quote unquote algorithm, everyone always quotes at or gets pissed yeah. at. They don't want people to know what their terms of recommending are because then people yeah. start farming that. Yeah, exactly. Like oh, people oh, have assumptions. There's yeah. assumptions and guidelines, but there's no hard A, B plus C divided by D times three gets you a score. And then we go against like they obfuscate that so people can't right. actually game the system. Mm -hmm. That said, here's how to cheat YouTube's algorithm. Find the most popular thing, remove the audio, put baby shark, and then repeat the video for 10 hours. <laughs> instant. Thousands of views. Baby shark. Do, 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 baby shark. Do, 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 do. Shrek 2, right. but the audio is replaced with baby shark or in loop. Yeah. It's perfect. All right. Tom, I'm letting you take this next one too. Um, okay. Because I could care less about this at this point i, I apparently nobody cares about this right now because <laughs> the team numbers have dropped off significantly enough to impede matchmaking uh so uh marvel's avengers the game launched it was kind of a shit show the game itself is fine the monetization is bad um and it's yet another lifestyle game and it's just not gelling it. so the company came out and they said hey we're sorry what we're gonna do is here's our roadmap of all the bugs we're gonna fix the stuff I read did not include like monetization or maybe turning this into not a lifestyle game. Like none of the stuff people actually cared about was in there. It's just a lot of like, we're going to fix these bugs sort of stuff, which I guess is nice, but Hey, Hey, don't worry. Cause if you're currently playing, you are going to get four. Yes. Count them four different types of in-game currency for free. Bah, bah, bah. Um, <laughs> When a game has four different types of fucking currency, your game yeah. is broken. Yeah. Well, tread lightly. Rocket League no. has three. Your game is broken. Yeah, they're they're That's on too thin many. fucking ice, yeah. buddy. Thin fucking ice. <laughs> the first time I played Siege, I was like, uh, wait, there's the silver ones, and then there's there's the gold ones. When and, I play I get, a video game, how do I get the silver it, ones? <laughs> unless it's something like fucking Civilization or a game that is about macroeconomics, I don't need an economics fucking degree to play your fucking game. Leave this shit out of it. Yeah. Ranty, rah! But anyway, that game sucks. <laughs> that game's gonna die, and um, yep. here within the next three um, months, there will be no more news ever of it. Fuck. Um, <laughs> We got a final bit, final tidbit, Phasmophobia. You know, the game around here we all love a lot. Uh, Crack Steam's top 10. Hey. So fucking props to Single Dude. I was going to say, um, I was going to bring up again, if you didn't, that this is a game made by one dude. That is, it cracked the top 10 reminds, Steam charts right now. So It reminds me of uh, Stardew Valley, only this guy is nailing things that you don't expect single developers to do. Like, yeah. this is like a, <laughs> a game that looks good graphically. It's a decent game. It's got fucking audio engineering in it that's pretty fucking cool. It, VR well, support? <laughs> yeah, cross-platform VR and flat-screen support. That's almost seamless. The game 
has bugs, but like nothing, nothing Bethesda level. <laughs> Almost no game breaking bugs. Only found one, yeah. but it actually was like in and out intermittent, which was weird. Yeah. So, like, if you was to tell me that that was a team of twenty people, I would have said, yeah, it makes sense. I would expect yeah. that early access, twenty you, people. Yeah. You tell me it's a single dude. That dude's either he's been putting like seven or eight years into this game, and we just don't know it, or this dude's really fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. So congrats to him hopefully this means that he'll um commission out some artwork and get some new assets and make some more levels because yeah, i would love I, to have a few more houses more levels biggest, and another ghost type would be cool my biggest yes. issue with phasmophobia and i think this is everyone's biggest issue with phasmophobia we want more yes that's it that's the problem <laughs> just more of more. everything more, more ghosts, more deep, levels, more, more tools. More tool, yeah. Look, the more game tools. was thirteen dollars, dude. If you're watching, by some miracle, we'll pay you for more. Like, don't be afraid of that. Make DLC. it pay DLC. We will pay for it. I would happily pay twenty bucks for DLC that has some expansion for this game. Uh, it is, it is worth it. So, how would the community feel if he was to say something on the lines of, "Okay, we're early access and." Some people follow the practice of early access where when you buy early access, it's as cheap as the game is going to be and it's only going to get more expensive. How do people feel that, okay, you no longer get updates. The game's now a little more expensive. You need to pay the difference to start getting updates to get the new content. Um, That's essentially like just know. buying a DLC it's, at that point, isn't it? But it's forcing yeah. it to get updates. Now, granted, the old game would still play, but you wouldn't be able to match make with people unless they're on that same game. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I that feel gets about messy, that. especially when you get it gets multiple weird iterations and updates. Well, I don't, I don't know that it would even work in the current systems because, like, there are a lot of rules when you put games on these digital marketplaces that say you cannot charge for patches; you can charge for a DLC. Hmm. So, True. like, without so some developers have gotten around this by just saying, "Okay, this game is like one, and we're putting out Phasmophobia 2. Yeah, uh, and that's and that would be fine, I think. Um, Walking Dead, yeah, like, uh, season one or episode one, or episode house two. Packs. This yeah. game would actually be great for house packs, ghost packs, house packs. Yeah, yeah, like it, and you could do it in a way like Halo did this great, where if everyone in the lobby had the map packs, the pool was open. But if you were playing with a friend that didn't have them, you could still queue together. It's just the new maps wouldn't come up. Yeah. So, I mean, that would be a great way for me to get more money. Like uh, CSGO actually did this. If you bought the DLC and you got early access to the beta maps, um, you could party and play those maps with your friends, but they couldn't launch them on their own. To That's be able a fair to way to do it, too. Launch. Yeah. And that way, like, if you know, okay, I, I've got a group of four ghost hunters. We always play together. You know, here's... Here's Tom. He's going to own the stuff for the account. Everybody Venmo Tom, like $3. Uh, <laughs> that'd be perfect, too. Uh, and frankly, well, frankly, the, like even if it did work that way, I would want to support this game so much that even if I didn't require that DLC, like even if everybody around me had it, I'd buy it just to yeah. give, give this dev some money. They fucking earned it. So it's... I get wanting to put a game out cheap. Because you want to make sure it sells. You're an unknown quantity. No one knows you. If you charge too much, people won't give you a shot. But now he's at a spot where he clearly undersold his game. Yeah. So I'm just, a, I want to make sure that there's stuff we can do to get him more cash so that he keeps working <laughs> yeah. on it. <laughs> Please, if you are listening, get us some way to give you more money for the love of God. We have we want more shit. It to everyone we can. There's only so many times we can buy this game. Uh, just let us let us give you more doubt. Exactly. But um, that said, dude, the game's great. Obviously, you're here hearing yeah. us. You know we love it. So we'll leave it at that. Um. So Minavi asks, when's the next time we're going to do Jackbox? So Never. I'm MIA next week. But after the the week after that, so it'd be like Halloween weekend, I think, actually. Um. That would actually be um, our four-year anniversary or five-year four-year anniversary for seventy-two pin this iteration. So I was wanting to actually pick up seven and do some seven on stream after cast. So maybe then, maybe then. 
Perhaps. But we, we will do, at some point. We should do something special for that cast either way. Yes. If anybody has I any ideas, please reach out to us. And with that, you fellas got anything you want to add? I got nothing. Mm, All right. Well, nope. in that case, rundown time. So for all of you watching us on Twitch, thank you. Very much appreciated. But you can go over to our YouTube, 72 Pen Connector, and you can catch all of our highlights of our different podcasts. So if you missed a podcast or you just want to catch the small tidbits, they're there, as well as the whole podcast is there. And we are getting some other content up there as well. So just go over to our YouTube, check it out. We promise we're doing stuff with it now. If you're watching us over there, thank you. But even better yet, you should come to our Twitch, twitch.tv slash 72 Pen Connector every Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, and watch us live. Get in the chat, get in the conversation, hell, get in the games. Um, if you're just wanting to keep up to date with some of our information, follow us on Twitter, 72PC underscore official. Uh, we do our plays of the day. We have tournament updates. We have Rocket League announcements and just general bullshit that comes up sometimes. Um, we have our Discord. If you're on our Twitch, go down below, get in there. A lot of fucking cool people. If you're on our YouTube, I think we have it up in our About Us or something like that. You should go jump in. Um, and finally, uh, 72 pinconnectorcom your home to find all things 72. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all I got. Last chance, I you guys. Got, I have got one more thing. One more thing. Chewie has fast more thing. Okay. <laughs> <You've>, <laughs> Tom, I was actually... After the cast was over, thinking about buying him that. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen. I'll PayPal you the we... $6 half price of it. <laughs> that's all we got for you this week. Till next week. Game on. See you, everybody. You're See ya. fucking ridiculous, Tom. <laughs>